Hey, you, what is up, guys? It's SuperFPV here, back out with another video. And you are most likely here because you saw my TPS Tracer video and you got excited and bought a TPS Tracer and you want to know how to install it, right? Probably not. You probably just randomly clicked on this video. But <laughs> um, today I'm going to run down, uh, run through uh, how to actually install your TPS Tracer, uh, how to uh, install it through Betaflight as well, uh, how to bind it. And uh, for those Tyrannus QX7 users, how to do the mod piece and change the settings that are specifically for your Tyrannus QX7. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first things first, I actually want to go on the bench uh, and uh, install the mod piece for the QX7 before we continue. Uh, if you want to skip uh, the QX7 bit, if you don't have a QX7, uh, there is a timestamp. Uh, just skip through it and uh, and we'll move on to the next step. So uh, before I actually go on to the workbench, I just wanna say this is not gonna be a super, super detailed video uh, of any kind uh, on how to solder or anything. You must know how to solder. Um, like, that's, like you must know how to actually solder because this is actually very, very small and tight soldering uh, and the soldering conditions like the PCB being like opened up and everything uh, is actually quite difficult. Uh, I might just be whining for no reason about it, but for me it was actually quite difficult um, and uh, for you it might be. So if you're not super uh, good at soldering, I would suggest you go to like a cell phone repair shop or something. They know how to solder pretty well and they'll probably do it for you. Uh, but uh, if you are pretty good at soldering, let's get to the video. Uh, it's not going to be a super, super detailed video again. Uh, I'm just going to run down through, uh, run through the steps with you guys. Uh, I'm not going to record me soldering uh, or anything for parts of it uh, I'm just gonna run through the steps uh, and that's gonna be it uh, uh, and uh, if you guys have any questions uh, after the fact please do comment down below and I'll try to help you guys as much as possible alrighty so the first step you want to actually do is take off the covers on top of uh, on the back of your Tyrannus uh, and then take the four screws off one two three and four I've already done that and then we can go ahead and open it up and you want to be very careful because there are a bunch of wires and stuff that might get caught in the back plate. See, it comes off pretty easily, but you still wanna be pretty careful um, about it coming off. So the next thing you wanna actually do is take off the eight screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've already taken off these two screws, and then I'll be right back. Screws are gonna be a little tough. It takes a little bit of patience to actually get them out, but the last thing you wanna do is actually strip a screw. So Take your time. All right, so this next part, you wanna be pretty cautious. Uh, you wanna hold on to the back of this and flip it over um, because you wanna take off the buttons that are in the front. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it right here, flip it over very carefully, and then put your hand behind there and pry off this little button right here. And just get underneath it and just go twist and it'll come right off right here. These buttons are gonna come off when you actually flip it back over and uh, start messing with that again, uh, on the back side again. So flipping it back over. Now it gets quite complicated because now we're gonna actually start soldering and taking stuff off, which is gonna be pretty difficult. This thing right here is a vibrator. You wanna be very careful of this thing um, because once that comes off, you're not gonna be able to have any haptic feedback. So now what you wanna do is flip this over to a point where you can actually work on the bottom side of this. Um, there's a haptic feedback sensor right here, so you wanna be very careful of that when you flip it over. And there's a ribbon wire, ribbon cable going on over this. You really wanna be careful when you flip this thing over. Uh, so I'm going to take this haptic feedback sensor off the, off the little cage right there, take this very carefully and hold it, flip it over like so. And then I'm gonna prop it up something that is heavy enough for it. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I got something that's a little bit heavier. Uh, so I'm going to pick it up just like before, carefully, being wary of that, because you don't want to bend that. And this is your display, so you want to be careful of that as well. And then put something that can prop it up like so. And now it's propped up. So now what you can do is actually work on this bit over here. So there's this bit right here that you need to take off, this little thingy. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, but this needs to come off. I know you're not gonna be able to see as clearly. Uh, my lens doesn't zoom that far in, and the way that I actually have this whole rig mounted to get the overhead shot for this one is kind of janky. So I'm just gonna take a picture of it on my phone and then put up a diagram right here. All you gotta know is that you gotta take this thing off, uh, whether it be with a soldering iron, a heat gun, with flux, or, uh, 
or just brute force you got to take this thing off because you got to solder uh something onto onto the end of it which i'll talk about in a little bit so i'm going to go ahead uh and uh and take it off uh with a soldering tip i'm going to solder like each of the three tips and then work on it uh on taking it out from there um with with just straight solder heat Alrighty, so i have taken it off as you can see there are three bare areas right here one two and three um it's kind of hard to see on here again but <clears throat> i will put up an image on uh on the screen if it's actually like really bad and you can't really 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 see at all um so uh it was much harder than i thought um, but it was able to come off, so that's good. So the next step is to actually uh, pre-tin four wires, and we're gonna use one of the wires on the back here. Once we get uh, one of the wires done on the back here, we're pretty much good to go on the back, and we can close this up and actually put the uh, put the screws back in, so uh, that's good. Um, so let's get that over with. That way we don't have to look at the back of this side anymore and uh, go through with all this difficult area over here, because um, it is pretty difficult to work in this really tight back area. So let's get that done with, let's pre-tin, and then um, and then solder uh, a wire onto this right here, this little one right here. So there's one, two, three right here, right? And we wanna solder a wire onto this one uh, and have that wire leading up to the front. So let's get that done. All right, so we got one wire soldered over there and now we're done with the back side. So thank God for that. Let's close this back up right here, just like before. Be careful with the vibration pad on the side right here. Um, take it. Put it gently back into its spot. I have this wire not caught on there. Let's see if the wire, let's put the wire like right there. And it should just fall back into place and put all your eight uh, screws back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back in. And uh, you're good with the backside. And that, that was the hardest part. So uh, congratulations if you finished that. Now, when you put your screws back in, you don't want to be super tight. Um, you just want to be barely, like barely tight. You know, it won't to a point where it won't come off. Uh, you don't want it to be super tight because then you could break the PCB and you definitely don't want to do that because, you know, then you'd have to buy a whole new board. Um, so you just want to be nice and gentle with it. Uh, and once it gets tight enough, you'll know um, and don't push it past that point. And there you go. See? Just. So now it's ready to solder everything that we have to solder. First one, obviously, this wire, you saw that you soldered it to the back. Um, and the next thing one you have to solder is to the right side right here. And then you have to solder one to the left side right here. And then the last one you have to solder onto, onto this peg, but on the back side of the peg right here. Uh, hopefully everything is in focus. Um, so one right here, one to the other side, and one to this peg right here. Not these two pegs, this peg, specifically this peg. Uh, so after that, you can, uh, we can, I'll be back uh, after doing that and uh, we'll be good to go. So I wanna make a quick like brief interjection right here. When you do the soldering, you want it to be pretty quick, like a quick touch and go kind of situation. You don't wanna be resting your soldering iron on there for a while, cause it can destroy uh, the soldering pads and that's the last thing you wanna happen. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Alrighty, so now we have all four wires actually dangling from uh, from the sides. Uh, next thing you want to do is actually pre-tin your little mod piece, uh, and I have done so here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually uh, double-sided tape this thing onto here. Uh, that's what TBS recommends as well, um, to just double-sided tape it to there. Uh, and that's what I will do. So now I have double-sided taped it onto that. Um, you may notice that it is upside down and uh, the 3.3 the volt words and the ground word or whatever the words or the domina denominations of each of the pads are not showing. That's because I think this would be the best uh, way for me to actually put it. Um, your use case or your situation may vary, but for mine, uh, everything is upside down. So this is ground. The next one is 3.3 volts. The next one is in and then out. So according to that, I have my yellow wire going into the uh, out, which is gonna be up here. And then my white wire going into in, which is the one right underneath the this one right here. Uh, and then I have my black wire, which is ground, which is at the very bottom. And then my red wire, which is 3.3 volt, which is gonna go right here. Uh, so according to that, I'm gonna shorten everything. Um, so then I can solder it more uh, small and precisely. 
Uh, and uh, let's get to it. And with that, congratulations. We conclude the video. And here is my not so good looking solder joints uh, for everyone to laugh at in the comment section. But here we go. We are finished. Um, as I did do this uh, upside down so I get the flat side on the bottom onto this uh, this chip right here uh, for a better mounting. Um, this is the out. This is in 3.3 volts and ground. So I repeat, uh, since I did flip it over, this is a uh, this is the out, this is the in, this is the 3.3 volt, and this is the ground, okay? Uh, if you were to do it the other way around, it would be ground, 3.3 volt, in, uh, out. So just so you know, uh, that way uh, I don't have people confused in the comment section. Um, so uh, that concludes it pretty much. Next thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to put it back together uh, and then, uh, you know, do all the settings inside there. So to put this back together, um, what you want to do is be very careful of all these wires. You don't want any of the wires to be nicked um, when you put it back together because you did all that hard work. You don't want it to be messed up uh, at the very end. So uh, what you want to do is just go very carefully, very gently. Uh, try not to have these two wires um, in that little bracket area. Uh, and then, yeah, see how that's like not touching any of that. So you want to be very careful, very gentle, um, and then put it on top. Uh, switch it over, flip it over that way, um, and you have access to your sticks. I did take off my stick ends, uh, as I mentioned before, but you want to move it around, make sure that you still have full range of motion, and there's no uh, caught ends. All right, so I just popped my battery back in. Let's turn it on, see if everything's okay. Ooh, Welcome I forgot to FNTX. And look, it works. It works perfectly fine. No damage to the screens, no damage to anything. Uh, let me put this back in. So the way you put this back in is that there's only one way to put uh, to, for it to go back in. There is a notch. You see the notch? So just kind of slide the notch uh, in like Switch so. Warning. And you're good to go. And look at that. Everything works perfectly fine. We did it. Yay. So now that we are finished and ready to go, uh, we finally succeeded. We finished everything that we had to do uh, on the workbench. And now we are here. Um, I have installed the tracer module in the back. And let's get to it to, to do everything that we have to do on the tracer unit actually let me zoom in so first thing you want to do is actually choose the right model uh, if you don't know how to do that uh, it's by clicking these three lines right here uh, just click it once and then you're on your models page for me I'm going to choose my three inch quad uh, and now it says page one out of eleven we want to go to page two uh, and then scroll all the way down to the first thing that we want to change uh, and that is all the way down here where is it and there we go internal RF we want to change it from mode all the way down to off and that'll uh, enable us to actually have the external RF right here change that mode all the way to crossfire I know this is not crossfire this is tracer but uh, they use the same protocol and that's that's that and you're done with that uh, click OK and you're good to go for that part now on to the next one alright the second and final thing you have to do is hold down on these three lines for a little bit and now you're back into your now you're into your uh, radio specific settings uh, not for your model but specifically for your radio uh, you want to click page about seven times or eight times I believe until you get to the hardware tab which is a page eight out of nine scroll all the way down until you see max baud rate max baud rate for me is four hundred thousand dollars because if I, I have it already set if you do not do the inverter mod uh, running four hundred thousand uh, max baud rate is not going to be good for you it's gonna end up um, you know giving you RSSI loss at all times uh, and it's just gonna be all weird and funky so you uh, if you do not do the inverter mod uh, then you actually want to bring it down to 11 five two zero zero one hundred fifteen thousand two hundred um but if you did do the inverter mod set it to four hundred thousand and you're good to go so next thing up on the agenda is to actually wire this thing onto your flight controller so let me show you how to do that this is the ground pad so you actually want this to go to ground this is your five volt pad this is your tx and then this is your rx but you're not buying you're not soldering the tx to tx you're soldering the tx to an rx pad uh, and you are soldering the RX to a TX pad. So again, that's ground, right here. The square one is ground. This is five volt. This is your TX and this is your RX, but the TX goes to an RX pad and the RX goes to a TX pad. Uh, once you're done soldering, let's get on to Betaflight and uh, do everything that we have to do and uh, let's get to it.
So now that we're on beta flight, let's click connect, connect your quad, and let's go to the ports tab. Uh, the only thing we're going to be looking at on the ports tab is the serial RX section. Don't touch anything else on the other sections. That's all you really need to look at. Um, go to this side, uh, see which UART. Remember, you got to remember which UART you uh, you connected your tracer to. Mine, I have connected to UART 5. So what I'm going to do is on UART 5, I'm going to toggle serial RX on uh, as I have right here. Um, if you are not building a brand new quad, uh, one of the serial RXs are probably going to be toggled for what you had before. Like for me, I had FR Sky, so this was toggled on before. Uh, the rule of thumb is you can only have one serial RX toggled on. Uh, so if you have that toggled on, turn it off and then toggle it on on whatever um, you are that your, uh, your, your Tracer Nano RX is on. Uh, and then we'll move on, move on to the next step. The next step is on the configuration tab. Um, you need to go down here onto the receiver section, uh, click serial based receiver, which is S bus, uh, and then change the protocol to whatever uh, it was before to crossfire. Again, I know it's not crossfire, but they use the same protocol for tracer and crossfire. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. You have your uh, you have your uh, Nano RX receiver all set up in Betaflight, um, and uh, we can move on. So since we're on beta flight, um, I, I, I want to go ahead and teach you how to put uh, link quality on your um, uh, OSD. Uh, in my opinion, link quality is better uh, than RSSI for TBS systems. Um, uh, so that's the only thing I'm going to show you because that's the one that I recommend. So uh, what you want to do is go uh, on the configuration tab, go to this RSSI signal strength area and turn this off. You do not want that on. Uh, if you had that off, I mean, if you had that on and then you toggled it off, remember to click save and reboot. Always click save and reboot. reboot. Always click save uh, for each of the tabs because it just it won't save if you don't save. Next thing you want to do is go to your receiver tab. Uh, and if you have an RSSI channel already enabled um, for, you know, whatever reason, you want to go over there and click disable. Uh, so then uh, it can use the link quality uh, instead of the RSSI. Uh, so if you had that enabled before, click disable and then click save. And let's go on into the OSD menu. Uh, what you want to do is go all the way down over here uh, and toggle link quality. I have it all three, all three of the check marks toggled. Um, you don't need to, you can you just need the first one if you really want to be minimal about it. Um, but yeah, just uh, toggle link quality. Uh, and then mine's right here. You can place it wherever you want. The number's quite large, so you definitely want this. Uh, like it, it'll be like one, two, three, four, five, five ish numbers uh, wide. Uh, so you definitely want it to be um, in a in a in a in an open spot. So uh, that's that. Uh, you also want to go over here and go to the warnings tab and click link quality uh, warnings on if you want it to like warn you when your link quality is low. Uh, and then last but not least, you click save. So the last thing uh, TBS recommends is to go in the CLI tab uh, and then set the uh, warning level to 50. So what you want to do is go to set. OSD underscore link underscore quality underscore alarm uh, equals to 50. The default value is uh, 80, uh, uh, I believe. Uh, and then you set it to 50, click enter, uh, type in save, and you're good to go. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to show you how to bind your receiver, and you should be 100% uh, ready to go. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, in order to bind your receiver, I think the uh, the second best way to do this without going to Lewis scripts uh, is to uh, bind it through your TBS agent. Uh, so in order to download TBS agent, you wanna go to the Team Black Sheep website or I'll, li I'll link the website in the description below. Uh, you go in to the downloads area and download the TBS agent X. Um, go in, click the Windows version or the Mac version, uh, whichever versions that's applicable for you, and uh, we'll hop on the TBS agent and show you the rest. So we are almost done. Uh, next thing, what you want to do is to take your uh, my uh, your Micro TX or your your Tracer uh, Micro TX like module, like the big brick, uh, and plug it into the computer through the USB C port. Uh, and then open up TBS Agent X like we have right here and uh, your things will grow uh, glow green. Um, I would recommend you go to the Manage tab, uh, go to Firmware and update it to the latest firmware if you have not. Mine is on the latest firmware. Uh, and then we can go into binding. So the way do you want to bind um, or the rule of thumb with binding TBS products 
uh, is that they usually come uh, ready to bind right out of the box. So you don't have to click any special buttons. You don't have to click on uh, click the bind button or anything on the Nano RX. Uh, it's uh, once you plug in the battery, uh, it goes straight into bind mode um, and binds pretty much instantly. So uh, let's go into the bind uh, option, click manage, uh, and then click bind right here. Um, I don't have uh, a, a Nano RX ready to bind right now, but like I mentioned, all on Nano RXs um, are ready to bind right off the box. So that's very convenient. You don't have to click the bind button or anything. Uh, so all you have to do right now, once it goes into the binding menu or binding option right here, um, you just need to uh, plug the battery into your quad. Remember, propellers need to be off. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, so uh, all you have to do is plug in your battery into your quad and uh, it should bind uh, almost immediately. It'll show like a little green light um, and then you wanna power cycle it. So you wanna unplug it after it shows with the green light. Um, and this bind option right here, this binding uh, box on the screen will disappear. Um, uh, and the green light will show up on your Nano RX. Uh, for me, I'm gonna click cancel because I don't need to uh, bind anything. And then uh, to test it out, you wanna unplug your tracer uh, transmitter um, and then plug it into your uh, receiver or like your radio uh, and then plug your battery in and it should it should bind almost immediately uh, it's very convenient it's very nice uh, and it's great um, so that's pretty much it you can also go into your Tracer Nano RX uh, and then update the firmware there mine is up to date uh, so that's also something that you can do so yeah that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching I hope this quick tutorial uh, rundown was helpful um, I uh, I didn't want to make this super detailed because uh, every time I watch a tutorial I'm just like just tell me what to do um, so that's, that's kind of what I wanted to do uh, with this uh, uh, if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer them in the description, uh, in the in the comment section. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for watching. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.